Hey guys, just want to show you my latest creation. It's a rail for a TPX pistol. Um, the rail is mounted on the front metal block that goes around the barrel. Uh, barrel shroud or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's about here. So, um, the rail itself from Rep4, uh, I believe it's 20 bucks, 29 bucks, I don't remember. Uh, it's about this long. Um, I had to cut this off here with a Dremel tool. And uh, I had to grind this piece off with an angle grinder. Uh, was the thick uh, grind uh, grind disc on it? Um, I did it to get around the screw here. Uh, I cut out too much. You can cut a little bit less, but uh, whatever it works. So uh, to mount the rail onto the block itself, I had to uh, drill two holes and then uh, thread them with the tab. Um, the way you thread them is the first step is uh, you put the rail on and uh, you clamp it and you make sure that these sides here are perfectly centered. Uh, this piece right here, it's actually tapered as well. It's narrow here and it's wide on this side. Or sorry, narrow on this side and, and it's wide on the back here. So don't just align this wall with this corner. As you can see, there's a, an angle right there. So be careful. Uh, look, I use actually this edge of the rail itself to uh, align it with the, this is eyeball, the, none, none, of, none of this stuff is measured, I, I stuff like this, I eyeball everything, so it comes out pretty nice. You can see it's perfectly parallel. Anyways, uh, you put this on and then you use a drill bit that fits this hole perfectly before, before any, because you can see this is drilled out, before you drill any of this out, what you want to do is put a drill bit that fits very snugly into this hole and lower it with a drill press until it just marks a little dot on the anodizing, just, just to scratch through the anodizing. Then you uh, use a smaller, you, you remove the rail, you remove the clamp and use a smaller drill bit to uh, pre-drill a hole for the future thread. Uh, the drill bit has to be just the diameter of the screw um, minus the diameter of the thread. As you can see, you can see the threads behind the drill bit. So. Um, you use the same, you use the point that you marked with a bigger drill bit to, with the small, to um, drill the hole perfectly centered with the smaller drill bit. Then um, I installed this tap into the drill chuck, into the uh, drill press chuck, sorry, and I lowered it slowly while uh, hand spinning uh, the chuck to start the thread. If you try to hand thread this like this, uh, what's going to happen is because this wall is so thin, you end up threading it diagonally like this, like that, basically on an angle. It's not going to be perfectly perpendicular to the surface here. So that's why I use the drill press to, um, um, to start the thread. Once you start the thread, uh, you can remove uh, the tap from your uh, drill, drill press chuck and then put it in this manual chuck and then finish the thread. So once you do this, um, uh, you, you have the screw ready. So the next step would be to create a recess for the screw because you can see there's no... Uh, yeah, th this screw was like this before. Uh, so to create the recess, um, I use a rotary file, same thing, it goes into a drill press. Uh, this piece gets clamped to the drill press table and uh, I grind this off until this, the edge of this hole is flush with this surface right here. The reason for this, the next step would be using a, a DeWalt uh, drill bit like this. As you can see it has a, a, a narrow spot here and it's it's about half the or a third of the diameter of the actual drill bit so this acts as a guide if you just start drilling here what's going to happen as soon as this cutting edge catches onto the rail it's going to break the drill bit or it's going to chip the cutting edge or scuff up the rail or, or move it in the clamp and basically you're going to screw up your piece so uh, that's why i had to use um, the rotary file to create a flat spot once i created the flat spot I lowered this with the drill press until I created the recess for the screw. So uh, this here looks approximately like that. So then uh, you put the screw in and uh, that will be your basically one side of the rail will be done. On this side, same idea. Uh, you make sure the rail is perfectly parallel to your block and then you use the drill press. Uh, you use the bigger bit that fits this, uh, the inner hole, basically this hole right there perfectly same thing just lower it just slightly just to make a, a, a dimple in in the anodizing then you use the smaller smaller bit to pre-drill now here it doesn't matter where you drill it you can you know you have lots of spots to drill as long as it's centered between those two sides pre-drill it uh, same thing 
put the top in the drill chuck, lower it, uh, cut first three, four threads, take it, remember to take it out. Um, don't don't try to lift the, the drill press chuck with the piece because it's going to come out like this and, and break your threads. So you got to unscrew it basically uh, while uh, slowly removing the pressure from, uh, from the chuck itself, downwards pressure from the chuck. So remove this and then uh, put this uh, put the tap back in into this uh, hand hand tap and manual tap and then manually tap it back in all the way in so then you can reinstall your screw and i'm using the washer here because washer allows me to uh, get a better grip on this uh, onto this recessed hole and uh, once you put your screws in they're obviously going to stick out here into this barrel space so what i did then is i used a, a half round file stuck it in there kind of like this and uh, the edge of the file would be touching the screw this way uh, where it comes out so that if this is the surface of the barrel chamber I use the round file to scratch the edge of the thread where it comes out uh, through this wall here and so then I remove the screws and I use the cutoff disc to cut them off approximately once I cut them off and put them back in they'll be sticking out by about a millimeter here into this um, into this breech uh, or into this barrel space, so to speak. Then I used this bullet-shaped uh, grinding stone to uh, file it flush. Basically, what you want to do if this was a uh, this was a screw, uh, you would uh, grind it like this in a circular motion. And then you stick your finger in there, and make sure it's flush so it doesn't scratch your barrel when you thread it in. Then you take the screw out and you put it back in. When you put it back in, it's going to push the shavings out of this hole. The shavings were created while you were grinding, so then you just clear them with your finger. Be careful not to uh, drive a piece of metal, sharp metal, into your finger. Take them out, um, tighten up the screws, check for, make sure they're flush again. If they're not, grind a little bit more. And you end up with this. Uh, this, like I said, I cut this off with a Dremel tool. This was done with a grinder, and then I hand finished this, the edge of this hole. So there's no sharp edges anywhere. It's pretty neat and uh, nice and solid this is much better than the factory made piece the factory made piece the rail is f is parallel so you have to use your adjustment on your scope or on your red dot side to compensate for a projectile drop and also i believe it's plastic and i'm not 100 percent, but i believe it's glued on so uh, it comes off it can potentially break off if you fall with your with your marker so and uh Plus this is cheaper too, by about 10 bucks and it's fun to make. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours to make. This is how it looks like. That's it for today.